Hi, in this video, I'm going to be installing Plesk on a managed VPS hosting server with RootPal. So this tutorial is going to show you how to install Plesk on a VPS server. So the first thing we want to check out is Plesk. So Plesk is a great control panel if you're trying to move away from cPanel. I think it's the number one competitor to cPanel. cPanel is great. Um, it's very widely used by a lot of hosting companies. A lot of developers know it. Um, however, with the recent spikes and in increases of pricing with cPanel, you don't really have a say anymore in how many accounts you can have. I think they're charging by the accounts um, and it's actually really high pricing. So if you go to cPanel, you'll see 30 accounts is 32 bucks a month, which if you compare it with Plesk, 30 domains, um, and each account, you know, is, is a domain. Uh, so 30, 30 accounts would be around 15 bucks. So it's about half the price price. Uh, and Plesk is starting to increase their pricing on January 1st of 2022. Um, it's going to be $17 per month. Actually, no, it's going to be $18.50 per month for the monthly plan. And the yearly plan is $17 per month. But once you get after, once you go past this pro plan on cPanel, that's when it gets pricey. You get into the $48 per month range. Um, and then if you cope of that, it's 30 cents account, 30 cents per account after a hundred. And if you have a powerful server and you have four or five, six hundred domains, um, this is not a good, cPanel is not a solution you want to use. And it's definitely possible with some of these dedicated servers or virtual servers, they can host hundreds of domains without an issue. Um, we have a virtual server at RootPal that can handle two to 300 websites. Um, I think on, you know, a very low level VPS plan, because I think, you know, any, if a, if you have around four to five CPUs or virtual CPUs, you can handle, um, about a hundred domains without an issue. Um, especially if they're getting a lot of traffic, it, it should not matter. Um, each virtual core can handle about 150 simultaneous, simultaneous users on your website at one time. And that's per core. So you can have 150 people browsing your website with just one core. So that's something to think about because if you're, you know, you're looking to only have a couple accounts and you just want to stick with cPanel and you trust cPanel and go with cPanel. But Plesk isn't a great option. It's an awesome option. I, I like their control panel more. They have um, a great uh, technical team that has a live chat that ins you know will log into your server, fix everything you need to fix. Um, so they're pretty great. Um, Ru we Rupal also has you know partnered with Plesk. We're a partner with them, so we do have special pricing. If you buy a license through us, we'll, um, we will support you. Uh, and we'll help you and we'll raise tickets on your behalf with the Plesk engineers. So we're able to offer pricing at the yearly, um, so you don't, um, at the same plan. So we, if you're purchasing a, you know, web host edition plan, we'll give you the $25 per month, um, cost in, in, and we'll charge you monthly. So instead of paying 27, you know, dollars per month or whatever at uh, Plesk, you'll get a little cheaper pricing, a couple dollars off at RuPal. Plus we will raise tickets on your behalf. We'll investigate the issues before they go to Plesk and we will be your first responders to any issues you deal with Plesk. So now that that's out of the way and I, you know, talked about Plesk for a little bit, um, go ahead and check their, their website out, but let's get started and install it on our server. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild the server and 
that is typically, you know, something when you order a new VPS, you don't have to do that. When you're ordering a VPS, you'll select the server on the checkout page and it'll set it up through RuPal's checkout page. But if you chose the wrong, um, you know, if you chose the wrong operating system, then you can rebuild it at any time in the control panel. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with Ubuntu 20, um, but I need to rebuild my server. So I'm going to go to rebuild and choose Ubuntu 20. You can also choose Ubuntu 18. You know, it's also supported with Debian 10 and CentOS 7. Um, I believe it's also supported with CentOS 8. Um, so you can install Plesk on CentOS 7, CentOS 8, Debian 10, Ubuntu 18, Ubuntu 20. Choose the operating system that you're familiar with. Choose the operating system that you know. Uh, uh, however, for this demonstration, I'm going to be choosing Ubuntu 20.04 because Ubuntu is known to be a little bit more user friendly for people who aren't, um, you know, tech junkies or anything like that because Debian 10 is a little bit harder to use. It doesn't come with a lot of packages pre-installed on the server. And so sometimes you're, you find yourself, you know, installing a bunch of, um, a bunch of things you need to diagnose the things on your server and it's not pre-installed. So Ubuntu 20, it, it doesn't really matter which operating system you choose. You might, you could go with CentOS 7 um, or 8, which is known to be the most stable operating system in web hosting. Like that's what all the other web hosting co companies use. A lot, of, a lot of our servers at RuPal use, the new ones use Debian 10, but we also do use Ubuntu 18 um, and Ubuntu 20. So, there is a thing though for um, Ubuntu 18. If you use Ubuntu, or sorry, Ubuntu 20, if you do use Ubuntu 20 with Plesk, they have this article. There are some limitations on it. Ubuntu 20.04 ships with OpenSSL. It doesn't support TLS 1.1. Um, so that means one and 1.1 ciphers cannot be enabled on specific services such as this one, uh, which is fine. I mean, you shouldn't be on those TLS versions. There's some vulnerabilities in them. Uh, you need to be on TLS 1.2 anyways. A lot of security companies don't even want you uh, on anything less below 1.2. So yeah, there's that as well. Uh, there's also, um, you know, some mod security issues, which you don't have to worry about. The time synchroniz synchronization is a little bit different, um, but it's the same as CentOS 8 and 10. So it's not, it's not a lot. There's not really any, you know, really limitations that are terrible. So I think it's safe to install it. Uh, you can also go with Ubuntu 18 and you don't have the, you won't have these, you know, oh, where I closed the page. You won't have those limitations. Um, so make sure you read if whichever one you want to, um, you want to go with. If those limitations are important to you and you have software that needs, you know, TLS version 1.1 or TLS version 1.0, your code needs it. You're using PHP libraries, anything. Stick to 18, Ubuntu 18.04. Use this one um, because, you know, you don't want to mess up your code. But I'm going to go with Ubuntu 20.04 and I'm going to rebuild it since I'm going to be using, you know, WordPress sites or PHP sites and I want all my stuff to be updated and the latest. So there we go. I'm going to copy my password, which is posted right here. I can also get it on the other page. I'm going to go back to the VPS page. My server should be rebuilding. It takes about 30 seconds to rebuild the server. It's pretty quick. <laughs> and it's already done. There we go. So I'm going to log in to Putty. And I'm going to copy the, pa uh, the IP right here. Uh, 
And I'm going to click open. You'll get this alert. Just click yes. Type root because that is the username after installing a new operating system or rebuild on RootPal. And we're going to copy the password, which you could find right here. Right click, which will paste it. It's going to ask you to change the password. So I'm going to right click again and that will enter the current password. I'm going to enter my new password. So I've set my new password. I'm going to clear this right here. And now I'm going to install Plesk. And to install Plesk, it's just you one. It's I use this method called the one line, uh, one click, one line click. So you just copy this right here. We open our console and we just right click and click enter. And what this does is it will automatically say yes to everything, the defaults and all that stuff and install Plesk um, without you having to configure anything. So now we just wait until it's done configuring and building um, Plesk and installing it. So I'm going to come back to this in around 10 minutes and it should be done installing. And then I could start setting up my Plesk site, a uh, server. All right, so I'm back and it looks like it installed it very quickly. It was about six or seven minutes to fully install Plesk. So now we're gonna just read up here. I'm gonna open this a little bit bigger and it's gonna say to complete the configuration process, browse to this URL. So it generated a host name for us which is right here. I'm gonna right click and I'll copy that. And now I can paste that into my browser. And I'm now in my Plesk setup, which now I can enter my email, which I'm going to enter that. And now I'm gonna set my password. I'm just gonna make it the same as my server. You should probably have a different password than your server, um, but I'm just gonna choose the same one for now. And now if you don't have a license, that's fine. This is the cool part about Plesk. They will give you a full featured license, trial license for 15 days. So I'm gonna do that because I wanna test Plesk out. I don't know if I wanna use it. I wanna see if it works well. So I'm gonna um, agree and enter Plesk. So what's gonna happen now is it's going to request a license from the server it's going to configure the web server and it's going to throw me in right there now i can click explore plesk and i'm set up so what's cool is about plesk is it gives what's called these temporary names or temporary domain names so what it did is it assigned me a host name um using some type of dns method they have that connects to the ip address and um, their domains. So what they did is they gave me this temporary host name. I recommend changing this to something that you'd want to, uh, you'd want it to be validated like control panel or whatever. Um, but the first thing I do is I go to change view. I go to the service provider view just so I have a little bit more information on the left side and everywhere. And you can use this for the temporary time but if you click this right here um, the first thing i recommend doing is going to server settings and setting a host name so you can set this right here and a host name could be anything like you know let's say you have your domain name is rootpaldemo.com right um we wouldn't put that there we do maybe like plesk.rupaldemo.com for our control panel. So when we type in plesk.rupaldemo.com, it'll go to the Plesk page, we log into it, and it'll go to the control panel, right? Um, but to do this, we would need an A record to this right here. So let me log in Cloudflare and point my A record to this uh, plesk.rupaldemo.com. And I'll show you how to set up that host name for your Plesk server. So 
So I'm logged into Cloudflare and I'm going to go to my domain name and I'm going to go to DNS and I'm going to add our A record and I'm going to type in Plesk and you can type in whatever you want. It could be CP or control panel, whatever you can do, you know, web of Rupal does a lot of different things like web, um, you know, Yovi, I don't know, whatever you want to do. It doesn't, you can choose any type of host name, link, or whatever. Um, I like choosing names that, you know, you know, uh, that are a little bit different just so it's, uh, it's standardized. So if it's a website, if it's a website or if it's a web server, I'll choose web and then we'll do, um, tofu, right? <laughs> so web tofu, and then we'll point it to an IP, make sure that is checked off. We need to get the IP, which is going to be right here. That's the IP address of the server. We're going to put that in there, click save. And now we can go to web tofu.rupaldemo.com and it's going to go to the plus page, but it is not secure and it is not the host name of the server. So what we need to do, go back to your Plesk, go to tools and settings, go to server, server settings, go to full host name. We're going to replace it with the web. Make sure you don't have any of that stuff in there. We're going to replace it the web dash tofu.rupal.demo.com. We're going to click OK. But we're also going to go back to our server on Putty, clear that type host name and cool plus change the uh, the host name just by changing it from server settings so that's a that's cool did that now we're gonna go and install that certificate that we need um, to make it SSL okay so now it's forcing me to use to, to log in again because they changed the, the host name so let's see if I can advance okay so if this happens to you right i changed the host name it just gave me this connection isn't private this might happen because i didn't get a chance to install ssl i'm glad this happened because i could show you what to do all you have to do is go into private mode that's it go into private mode click advanced oh and it's not doing that okay so you might need to choose a different browser that allows you to log in um, let's see. We can go through the IP. Let's see if that works. There you go. So I guess it's not letting me use the host name. Let's see. Okay, so it's trying to say use this SSL. Do not use it right now. I don't think the SSL is installed. So let's just enter our username. And now I'm accessing the Plus login page through my IP address, just temporarily. We're going to go to Tools and Settings. And this is what happens if you don't install the SSL right away after changing the host name. So now we need to go install the SSL. So we'll go to SSL and TLS certificates. We're going to click this Let's Encrypt button right here. The domain name is going to be our host name. The email address is whatever email. Make sure it's a valid email address or it will not install SSL. You cannot put fake emails in here. It will not work. Click renew. And now it's generated this SSL. So now we can test it out. We won't get that error anymore. Uh, maybe control F5. It is not showing, it's not showing not secure, but it is secure. Let's click log into Plesk. There you go. It forced the SSL and now we're able to log into Plesk using that um, HTTPS. So now we can log right back in. And we're good to go. So now we can go in and install updates and all that stuff on our server. You get 15 days to fully test it out, which is a lot of time. One of my favorite features about Plesk is going to domains. 
you can click add domain here you can do a temporary domain which generates a domain right here you can start building your website i mean it is so quick other control panels don't have something like this so i mean like look how quick it is especially on the rupal vps hosting with the nvme drives it just makes it so quick issuing your your website and this is the slowest vps server you can order with rupal this is one two cpu cores two gigs of ram it or i think it's two gigs of ram um let's see yeah two gigs of ram and this thing is just lightning fast i mean let's go install wordpress and see how quick that is real quick before we end this video so this is the automatic wordpress install kit that wordpress toolkit it comes with you can do you know your database automatic update settings um, update everything automatically i'm just gonna you know not mess with that i'm just gonna click install and then it's gonna install wordpress which is astronomically quick like look how quick that is it's already done so now you click that x button down there um i think we just refresh this and it'll load the wordpress there we go so now we open our website and it's just so quick look how quick that loads and you can in, it, in caching nginx is not even enabled yet so and this is speeds up your website even faster so let's go ahead i'm just gonna keep going might as well right i'm gonna install this and i'm gonna show you what a website will load um what a website how fast it'll load with a vps server um, so i'm going to close this and a full theme installed so then i enabled that i'm going to enable this theme right here it is enabled i'm going to go back to my website um i'm going to go back to my domain I'm just going to do a couple things just to make sure that the PHP settings are configured so I can um, so I can install and import. I want to import demo content. These are the typical changes I'll make um, for WordPress websites. I usually don't go above a 256 memory limit. Now that I set the memory limit on PHP settings, I'm going to go back to WordPress toolkit where my site's at. I'm going to auto log in using this button right here to WordPress. And now I'm going to go back to my theme. I'm going to go to Astra Options because I installed this theme. And as you can see, look how fast the web, like everything just loads instantly because you're not sharing resources with anyone. This is your cloud server. So everything's going to load instantly um, because you're not sharing anything. So let's go ahead and click Get Started. It's going to activate everything for the Astra theme. I'm going to choose Elementor. It's the best one. Don't choose the other ones. They are not as good. Um, here's some demo content I can install. Some are premium. Some you have to pay for. Some are free. So I'm going to go with just a simple one. Let's see. I want to choose something that has like WooCommerce or something. Something that has like a shop. Um... Is there like a, there we go. Let's look for a shop where that has WooCommerce. And a lot of the WooCommerce ones, that's a little cool one. There are a lot of the WooCommerce ones are paid. They want you to pay for, you know, for an e-commerce store or whatever. So here, plant shop. So this is a WooCommerce one. Typically these are, you know, a little bit heavier. This one looks like a, a little heavier one as well this organic store but i'm gonna go with one of these so i'm just gonna click that import complete site it's gonna say i'm a you know a wordpress developer or whatever next just click skip you don't need to put your info in and now it's gonna install these plugins and activate everything and look it's just going so quick oh my gosh that's the power of a vps So now this is the longest part where it imports the demo content. 
Um, it needs to pull the images and needs to pull all the content and stuff like that from the remote website. And there we go, it's all installed. So now we can view our website and look how fast that loads. So this is the website. We'll just end, you know, log in. There we go. So now we're clicking around and it's pretty, it's, it's loading instantly. The entire website's loading instantly and it's on one, you know, two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. And this could probably hold around, two CPUs can hold three up around 300 simultaneous users on your website. So over 300 users could be browsing your website at the exact same time. And your VPS server with two CPU cores, you know, cause uh, can handle it. So, um, and especially on NVMe drives, which loads everything quicker, it loads the content quicker and everything. So I'm able to test, build my website without even owning a domain name on my VPS server because of the temporary domains that Plesk has. So I'm gonna run that through GT metrics. And there's a bunch of optimization that we have not done yet. I just wanna see the GT metrics of importing this demo site um, and as well as the fast server. So the, va the fast cloud server with the NVMe drives and everything. So let's see um, what we're dealing with without any optimization on with any plugins and Nginx not even being en en enabled yet, which would speed up the website even faster. Let's see. So not bad. So a TTFB of 578 milliseconds. It's loading in 1.4 seconds without any optimization, no caching, no Nginx caching, uh, which would cover all of this stuff. So if we did optimization, we'd be getting 100% and our website would be loading in less than one second. So that's great. That's how you set up Plesk. That's how you set up your websites. That's the tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you like these tutorials, we'll be posting more um, on managing your VPS server with Plesk, some other control panels. So stay tuned. Thank you.